This video is on a topic I've kind of neglected to talk about, and that's verticals, except to mention that verticals should never have ground radials because ground radials are a throwback from the days of, of very low frequency, still used in AM broadcast at very low frequencies for ground coupling for ground wave communications. Amateur radio HF communications are not ground wave. Our signals go up. The purpose of the radials, at least at the feed point, is obvious. Without something, there's nothing to connect the second conductor of the transmission line to. <clears throat> radials are expensive, especially now that if they're copper wire, copper is expensive. A lot of work to install. If they're on the ground, they might get wrapped up in a lawnmower. A lot of work to trench and severe RF losses. The Earth, says one of the old books, is a very lossy dielectric at HF. It's a resistive lossy at, at low frequencies. Without something, there's only one thing to connect one of the transmission line conductors to, and that essentially leaves a very high impedance excited and fed and those don't work well either the alternate to that is called shunt feeding it was disallowed by FCC years ago according to uh, Dawson uh, IEEE he's a antenna engineer in Washington State and he published an article on a slant-fed antenna and an invaluable technique, and said that FCC never should have, have never should have uh, restricted shunt feeding. It shows the benefits for it. But what a shunt is is something that goes around something. And in this case, in a diagram, you can see the H shape, which is kind of sort of the opposite of a J pole. I guess a J-pole is sort of maybe a shunt fed, but this is a general design of the two shunt fed verticals I have. The shunt is the, the short tube going vertically on the right from the shield in a diagram, and they're connected together at the top of the shunt by some more of whatever the tubing or the wire is. I found that tubing works better. Obviously, Verticals are preferred because they only take basically a single point mounting or could be suspended by one point. I've done both. With wire, it's necessary to suspend it. We can't make wire stand up. Of course, some kind of guying is good if they're very tall. I've made two versions of this, one intended for 20 meters, which is about a half wave overall height, about 20 feet, and one that's a full wave on two meters. The performance of both of them is extraordinary. Very low SWR, in fact, one to one on the 20. And the two meter version was about a 1.4 across the entire two meter band, four megahertz. The interesting observation especially about the two meter is that it's a beam so to speak a single element beam i bet you've never seen one by virtue of the shunt it's directional i was able to put it up at 15 feet on a light duty radio shack rotor and from oak ridge work a repeater down in southern north carolina at an s5 then i could turn the antenna and completely null out that repeater that's presumably 5S units directionality. That is significant. It also did a good job on satellite. I think, is it uh, 440 uplink and 2 meter down? I don't recall, but whichever, that's what it was. Used it on satellite several times. The 20 meter vertical is the really strange one. I built it out of desperation in Washington State. I had such a small lot with power lines, I could not put a dipole up safely. 
the only place I had to mount a vertical was on a metal uh, chain link fence gate post, three inch pipe. Longer story short, mounted it up. I uh, used an uh, inch and a quarter uh, top rail tubing from Homeless Depot. That's the galvanized steel that's on top of the chain link fence. Put uh, two sticks of it up, 19 foot six inches. Of course, no way to load it. There's, there's only one place at the bottom of the tube to connect a conductor. So I literally went in the basement, grabbed some, some uh, number 14 wire, insulated wire. I just grabbed it and pulled it off as, as wide as I could reach, 29 inches, cut it off, connected it, and the SWR was one to one dead flat resistive on 20 and across the entire band. And it also works 30 through 10 continuously. No bands, no traps, no relays, no adjustments, no goofy little hats, no junk. Continuous. The SWR is not perfect continuously. And it, it worked the top of 10 meters, but not the bottom, which is a bit odd. But extreme bandwidth. <clears throat> I was working QRP yesterday on 30 with it. Worked an operator in, uh, I think it was Jersey. Five nine five nine both. He's around 100 watts and an end fed piece of junk. I was running eight watts, same signal strength. He couldn't believe it. I've worked Europe <clears throat> with one watt on this vertical. Now verticals and dipoles are obviously different orientations. Sometimes one doesn't work well. Sometimes the other works better. Depends on the signal polarization and the propagation. And I'm generally in a poor location for a vertical because I'm shrouded by hills all the way around. And the usual presumption is that verticals have a low angle of emission. As to the shunt, um, again, the tubing is, I think it's an inch and a quarter galvanized. Don't use steel. Too much loss. The zinc coating reduces, reduces the losses quite a bit. That means it doesn't rust. Copper would be better. The two meters made of copper. The 20 meters made of steel tubing. But the interesting thing is that the shunt feed on the antenna is an electrical circuit. I've been hammering on the idea that the transmission line and dipole are not a circuit. Because a circuit is defined electrically as a continuous path through which current flows. There's no continuous path for current in a, a transmission line fed dipole. Here there is. And the shunt itself, the, the vertical part on the right, and the corresponding parallel part of the antenna tube on the left are inductors. And they are with <clears throat> opposite current flow directions. Assume the current's going up the antenna tube to the right and down the shunt tube. Those are opposite directions. They have opposite fields. So that means there are no fields, in theory, between the two. That suggests directionality. I've seen some evidence that this 20 meter vertical is directional, although it's a bit big for rotating. That, that would be, that's kind of a similar problem as making a rotatable dipole. But in the paper published by Edwin Rosa, 1919, in the National Bureau of Standards, and this is on my uh, video for my reading list. So look down the video list and you'll find it. But he gives formulas for different configurations of inductors, wires and such. A piece of wire, uh, wires in uh, parallel with the same direction of current flow, wires in parallel with opposite directions. And I, I forget the term. But the effect is to reduce the overall inductance. So, thing to do, just arbitrarily set up about a half wave high uh, piece of whatever pipe you got handy. 
and uh, start with uh, maybe a foot long shunt and vary the spacing. The tuning is a function of the less of the overall height and even less of the height of the antenna tubing above the shunt. It has bigly to do with the height of the shunt and the spacing of the shunt away from the antenna pole. Those are basically what governs it. I was able to work 40 meters DX on my 2 meter vertical. Didn't work well, but I could do it. It wasn't a good match. The 20 meter vertical that's 1 to 1 on uh, 20 is 1 1.3 to 1, last time I checked it, with the antenna removed. Just the shunt. And that, of course, that starts making us think of the idea of a loop. It doesn't receive or get out worth a crap. And that's thinking back to my video about why, in, why loops are not antennas. It only works with the, the remaining... Uh, 19 foot 6 minus, uh, I think the shunt is 16 inches high. So about 18 foot of that antenna pole has to be above the shunt for the antenna to work. Where the power goes, who knows? In the ground, fritted off in some strange direction, I don't know. But it clearly does not work as an antenna. This can be done with wire. I've experimented with wire verticals. They have to be very tall. Uh, didn't seem to be good correlation between the height as compared to wavelength and the actual frequency. The frequency seemed to be higher. That would be obviously because of the wire diameter. But uh, they were looking to be so incredibly high for the band that I, I didn't pursue it much further because, because this works so well. As to the myths about verticals being noisy antennas, much of the noise on HF is lightning. In theory, lightning strikes are vertical. The vertical might be assumed to pick them up better. The vertical is perpendicular to <clears throat> almost all the utility wiring, so there should be no pickup there. Verticals are no different than dipoles. They're noisy because the system is out of match. My vertical here in Tennessee was noisy when I first put it up. It wasn't matched. Now it isn't. No noise. So, again, it's got to be properly matched. One benefit of the vertical is that if it's off, if you really want to try to get some kind of multi-band performance, you can go out to the ground-mounted vertical and put a matching network at the feed point, and that's how they do it in AM broadcast. It's not right. That doesn't change the antenna. It may couple more energy in. There'll be more losses. Might work a little better. But it's not as grossly wrong as trying to put this fake tuner at the transmitter, which is, there's nothing right about that. So there's something to tinker with. Have fun, KBYP.